Hi and welcome to Target Learning VCD. Today we're going to take a look at Unit 3, Outcome 1, VCD. So we go to the Target Learning VCD menu, click the Learn, and that should take us to the Learn menu. Click Unit 3, Outcome 1, and that takes us to this kind of home page for Unit 3, Outcome 1. Uh, there's the outcome statement there. And basically, there are six parts to this task. Outcome 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.5, and 1.6. So in each of these tasks, we look at each of the design fields. So there's an analysis and a practical task for environmental design, and an analysis and a practical task for industrial design, and the same thing for communication design. Before you get started, uh, there's some work that you can do learning about the distinguishing characteristics for each design field. But I'm going to jump straight into the 2023 work for Unit 3, Outcome 1.1. Here's the environmental design analysis. So essentially what you're going to do in this task is analyse the features of existing designs. You're going to learn about... Um, key features, techniques for analysis, audiences, and making connections. And the assessment work is going to be to make an annotated diagram that uh, explains about how factors and other design considerations influence design. The subject matter for this is a cafe uh, in a coastal setting. So there's the key knowledge points. The first tasks are to, in fact, look at some examples of design and see how factors um, influence those uh, designs. We then look at how we identify and describe when we're doing design analysis. We look at audiences and then we start making connections because the idea of SAC 1 is that students look at existing designs and use that research to power uh, future designs. So as I've um, shown you that we'll be looking at cafes uh, for a coastal setting, there's some research points that you can do for some uh, coastal cafes and there's some magnificent ones to look at. The assessment is an annotated uh, diagram. The first assessment task for this outcome is to make an annotated diagram that demonstrates that we've analysed uh, examples of design. Since we're talking about coastal locations for cafes, I've gone out and I've taken some photos of a cafe uh, that's near where I live in Torquay. Uh, it's a great cafe. It's designed by Tony Hobber Architects in Torquay. Um, so what I've done is I've put my photos on an Illustrator file and then I've begun to examine key features of that design that make it important for that location. The Core 10 steel materials have a minimal um, aesthetic and blend in with the colours of the environment. Large overhanging eaves uh, create some shade. The orientation looks at the beach, the surfaces, the way the cafe blends in with its location from that angle, uh, and the access that people have to the cafe, the function of providing uh, food and drinks, and also the security. Finally, I finish off with some connections, which are some uh, important points, a list of important points that I would take forwards when I'm going to be designing my cafe. So essentially, we need to demonstrate that we're looking at a design, we're analyzing the features of the design, using visual communication language, and then we're taking forward some important points of those designs for our... I'm going to get ready for the next one. 
So I'm going to click back to the main menu and I'm going to go into Unit 3, Outcome 1.2, Environmental Practice. In this part of the outcome, we're going to design a cafe for a coastal location. So here's the model answers. There's some Tinkercad um, CAD work I've done. And here are plans and elevations of the cafe. I'll show you them later. In the learning knowledge for the outcome, there's quite a lot of uh, key knowledge points. I'll let you look through them. There's a brief with some constraints that uh, really show us exactly what we've got to do to make this design. The first part of the task is to look at how designers gain attention and maintain engagement with their audiences and a bit of a refresher on elements and principles and visual language. We then start visualizing ideas for our cafe. Now I've chosen a site that you'll use which is um, a lookout along the 13th Beach Road. So I, I propose that what we do is we take this location on 13th Beach Road where there's an existing lookout and we use this site for the base for our cafe. It's a magnificent location, incredible view and quite an interesting site because it's on top of a sand dune and it's pinned in between the beach and the road. We begin by making a two-point perspective actually of the um, lookout itself and there's a video there that can you can look at which will take you through how to do that. It's an exam style question uh, just designed to get our hand back in at two point perspective and how to measure and proportion a drawing as we would do in an exam. There are the plans and elevations that I've created that you use for your perspective. Make some visualization drawings of some ideas for the cafe. Then we launch into the technical drawing knowledge. So we make some uh, drawings of plans, some sketches and elevation of that. If you need to find out more information, you jump to these tabs, go back to plans and elevation. We learn about transposing, which means changing between two and three dimensions. We learn about drawing conventions and how when you make plans, you need to label your drawings correctly. You need to do um, information in a title block. You need to do the dimensions correctly. You need to use a north point. We learn about the uh, drawing methods appropriate for this design field, plans and elevations, planimetric and perspective views. Materials and uh, media we learn about. And then we finish up with the task with the assessment work. There are the key skills points that we've got to demonstrate. The connections between existing and new designs is first because that is our link between the designs we've looked at and the designs we're making. But often you can do this part at the end when you've finished um, your practical work. Here we make digital uh, based methods we use for plans for our cafe. Uh, and then I've used um, CAD, really basic program in Tinkercad to show us how we can uh, model the cafe quickly and easily. And we can use that to help when we make a perspective. So I've output a drawing of the cafe uh, in Tinkercad, it's a free CAD program. I've used tracing paper, I've printed it, used tracing paper as an overlay, I've calculated the vanishing points, and there's my one point perspective. For the planimetric drawing, I did it with the digital methods, I did it in Illustrator. I used my plan, I rotated it, I raised the lines, and there's the completed planimetric drawing. And that's all the prac tasks for this outcome. I'll show you those printed out in just a moment. We'll just take a look at the range of practical work that I did for this part of the outcome. Here's the uh, sheet on connections between existing and new designs. Now I actually completed this sheet after I had done my visualization drawings which are all annotated and I'm just showing um, what, what aspects from existing designs. There are two cafes. One is the third wave cafe I showed you and the other one is the Dunes Restaurant in Ocean Grove. 
um, what aspects of those designs am I taking from my research and putting into my work for the New Design Cafe? Uh, as I said to you, I created a plan of the existing signpost lookout and I used that to create a quite a detailed, accurate two-point perspective of uh, the existing location. I think this is a good idea because it gives us a chance to really experience the scale and um, view and the form of the existing location. Also to practice doing two-point perspective uh, in an exam style question. From that, I started to integrate my research and to visualize some ideas for the new cafe. Now, taking into consideration that the brief um, sets some l size um, restraints, it says we've got to have access for wheelchair, we've got to have security, we've got to have a preparation space, a toilet, a washroom. Um, we've got to use one aspect of the cafe, it's got to um, blend in or harmonize with the landscape. So I've um, chosen a curved shape on there to do that. I think I went forward with this circle one. It's a little bit easier to draw. Visualization drawings should be in uh, two and three dimensions. From that, I began to think about um, the actual plan of the actual cafe. There's my ramp coming up, my deck, my serving space, preparation space, uh, storage, toilet and washroom in there, all according to the brief. You don't really need to think about scale at this time. Just go through and draw it up as it comes naturally. Using that, I created an elevation because you do need to be starting to think about what the cafe is going to look for at look like from the outside. From that, I did start to go into scale and here's the uh, formal plan and elevation that I've drawn of it. You need to make this plan and elevation because this can be used for your planimetric drawing later. As I said, I showed you the Tinkercad model that I um, constructed in the free software program Tinkercad. And this is the one point perspective I did. Uh, it's come up okay. I did that on tracing paper, uh, which I overlaid on top of the um, drawing that I printed out from Tinkercad and then I put in all the details in the cafe. It gives you a nice realistic view of what that would look like uh, from a realistic eye level if you're walking up there and you're in the serving area. There's the planimetric drawing that I did. Uh, using the plan, I just rotated, started out with the regular plan, rotated it, and uh, then I raised up all the features. I've left this wall off for clarity so you can see into the drawing. Uh, you can see into that building. I've left a few details off such as the wires uh, and the deck boards, but there's the planimetric drawing. Again, it's very similar to an exam style question. Head back into the next part of Unit 3, Outcome 1. We go back to the menu and we're going to start with the industrial design analysis. So again, we analyze key features of design uh, the assessment task for this one is um, an extended analysis on this piece of design by Helen Contouris, Australian designer. So again, we have similar key knowledge points and we uh, look at um, the range of factors that have influenced these three designs here. I've picked a chair uh, because we're going to design a chair for our cafe, so we might, might as well start looking at how aesthetics and function and other factors influence um, the design of a chair. So there are three different things. We start considering materials and design elements. We look at audiences and there's an amazing um, stealth electric bike built in Melbourne um, that we examine uh, there. The, we do a, a preliminary task, which is to create a mind map uh, which analyzes design, uh, an example of design, in a lot of different ways. A mind map is a good way to do it because we don't have to write an essay. And there are the um, questions that we answer in analyzing that. 
we look at chair design, it's good to background our um, ideas and really know about what's come before us in designing chairs. So here are some chair designs from the last hundred years that you can look at, um, talking to some museums and talking to some influential designers. We, we do the um, uh, thinking routine connect extend challenge uh, from that as well. Design analysis, we start looking at Dieter Rahm's um, 10 principles of good design and we evaluate designs in relation to those 10 principles. And we finish up with a um, extended analysis of a, um, a piece of industrial design of a chair. Now to the industrial design prac work for this task. Unit 3, outcome 1.4, industrial practice. Here we're going to be, um, use our examination of chairs and cafe furniture and we're going to design a chair and perhaps even a table that we could use for our cafe. In the model answer I've shown you some um, a third angle orthogonal drawing that I've created of the chair and an isometric view of the chair um, where I've rendered it on the computer. I've also done a manual rendering that uh, helps us with exam preparation. The learning knowledge is similar for that of the uh, environmental design learning um, key knowledge points. There's a brief for the chair with some constraints. We go back in and just finish off some research for the chairs. I've given you a site here which is Living Edge, uh, which is a great commercial furniture shop. Uh, you'll be able to explore some massive chairs for um, cafes. Again, we do some um, identification and describing elements and principles and how they're used. Visualizing ideas, I like to start with some observational drawing. I know that we're not all that strong with observational drawing. So I drew a, um, a chair in my own house from three different angles in um, freehand sketch perspective. I'll show you these in a minute. Visualization drawings, let's start imagining what our new chair could look like using those skills of sketch, isometric and um, two point perspective. We develop the concept and then we get into technical drawings. I always begin with um, manual sketches for a third angle orthogonal just to make sure that I've got the forms and relationships correct. I then take that onto Illustrator and start drawing it up to scale. And you'll be able to see the conventions that I've used. There's a summary of the drawing methods that you need for industrial design, third angle orthogonal, isometric projection and two point perspectives. Again, we look at materials and media, manual media, digital based media, and digital based media CAD that you can use. For the assessment work, again, we do another sheet on connections between existing and new designs. Uh, there's the third angle orthogonal. And then we do an isometric and we end up rendering it with colored pencils. Lastly, I think we finish off with a two point perspective. So that's the work for Unit 3 Outcome 1.4. Let's take a more detailed look at some prac work that I did for this outcome that you sure saw on the screen uh, recording. Here's the observational drawing that I started with. Um, observational drawing is really good because it, it, it helps us to get an idea of the forms that we're drawing, uh, the relationship between objects and spaces. I did a little bit of rendering on those chair drawings uh, to enhance the form. I then started some visualization drawings of new chair forms that I would want to make for my cafe. Uh, I made a range of different concepts. There are two there. I'm annotating the drawings, talking about what I'm trying to do and what I think I should try to do better. I ended up with four different concepts. Uh, I liked the curved edges of this. I liked the fact that the chair started with a sort of a cubic form. I ended up putting a, an angle on the back of the chair there. From the visualization drawings, I began to develop uh, my drawings. I considered the chair 
how it would relate to a table and a stool and I began to think about it in uh, two dimensions for my uh, third angle orthogonal drawing. I then did a sketch third angle orthogonal where I started to work at scale. I started to uh, think about um, how I would form the radiuses for the curves on the chair. From that I jumped into Illustrator and I created a formal third angle orthogonal drawing of the chair. And here it is here with the uh, views correctly labeled, dimensions done. I've shown how to dimension the arcs and radiuses, center points, and of course the symbol. From that, I was able to do an accurate uh, manual isometric drawing. Uh, I used a scale of two to one, so I enlarged uh, what I had done in the third angle orthogonal, finished it off by rendering it for surface and form with uh, colored pencils. From that, I then thought I'll do a digital um, isometric drawing. And here's the digital rendered version done in Illustrator. And I wanted to take that through and put that into some context, you know, which we could use to show a client what we're thinking about for the design of the chair. The last little project here was to do a two point perspective. So using the third angle orthogonal, I constructed a two point perspective view of the same chair. Head now to the final uh, two parts of this outcome. We're going to go to Unit 3 Outcome 1.5, which is a communication design analysis. We're going to break from the cafe theme briefly, and we're really just going to um, look, about, look at how we can analyze uh, a range of different designs. I've centered more on uh, different communication design for different purposes, techniques, uh, some examples. But then we, we move into book covers and we do a series of examinations like uh, the audience, the purpose, uh, again techniques for gaining attention and maintaining engagement on these book covers as examples. We review elements and principles of design, apply them to a range of book covers again, and we get into some really detailed analysis with some exam-powered questions that uh, enables us to analyze clearly. We explore materials, methods, media as they're used in uh, communication design. And if you need to click on those links, you can go to detailed pages about that. We look at how materials are used and methods in book covers. And then we begin with some analysis tables, identify and describe. We again review um, elements of type and topography, looking at spacing, width, tracking, and kerning, uh, and, le and letting. We then do a similar task with making connections. So we choose a piece of communication design and uh, look at the key features of that and what we would use if we were going to design uh, in the next part of the task. The assessment task for this, I run as a test and your teacher will create a test for you, an exam style test for this part of the outcome. From this point, we can go to unit three, outcome 1.6, which is communication design practice. The purposes of these communication designs are to identify and promote our cafe. We're going to finish up by making um, a corporate identity for the cafe. So a logo that can work as a logo and a sign. And we're going to use the uh, three dimensional drawing method for communication design, a packaging net, and we're going to do a little mock up of a coffee tray uh, with a coffee cup in it. The learning knowledge again, similar key knowledge points for this outcome. And there's a brief there with the audience purpose, context and presentation formats required. This gets us familiar with what we've got to do for the SAT, which is our next task in unit three and four. 
We examine audiences for cafes and we um, continue to learn how to describe audiences looking at different audience characteristics. We examine purposes. Again, we look at how designers gain attention and maintain engagement using uh, elements and principles of visual language. We jump into some research because we're going to make the corporate identity for our cafe. And then we start visualizing ideas. I'll show you these in more detail in a minute. We do some research on uh, how we make uh, a coffee tray using a packaging net. We're not using um, molded uh, paper pulp like an egg carton. We're folding it up from flat material. Again, we transpose between two and three dimensions. There's my packaging net I made and I folded it up uh, as, as a quite small scale model, uh, but it worked really well. I'll show you that in a minute. Drawing methods for communication design, packaging net, sketching, drawing and painting. We use a different range of manual media and digital media. We do a review layout and typographic conventions and there's a task here where I um, ask you to adjust the tracking of your um, words between your letters and also the letting um, between the lines. For the assessment work, again, we make connections. We show how the research that we've made is related to the designs we're making. Um, and uh, I've uh, done some research of existing cafes, signs, colors. I've also got some um, research from outside this design field. Um, I've remembered that the typography that I've used came from um, the very first labels on Big M's and I thought that the um, colors I used even looked like these uh, railway loca uh, locomotives from years ago. There's the packaging net that we make and then I take the packaging net through into a mock-up in Illustrator and Photoshop. I used uh, 3D uh, and materials effects in Illustrator to model the coffee cup. And then finally, presenting the ideas, we create an identity package. We label the colors with hex colors. We label the um, typography we're using. We show the logo in a full color version grayscale and black and white and also the coffee tray mock-up. Let's take a look at the prac work in more detail now. We'll just take a quick look at the prac work that I did for this task. Here's the uh, original sheet with the connections between existing and new designs showing how the, the research that I made can be applied to the design work I did. Obviously you complete this sheet uh, after you've done some of the, uh, the work because you've got that work that you can show how it relates to the research that you've done. Here's the research I made. I found some Shutterstock images uh, which I've labeled clearly. I found my own images so I went and uh, shot some photos. Um, here's some from my own research in the field. I began with some manual visualization drawings and I've got two main concepts here. One where I'm using line for a retro style idea and the other where I'm using shape um, based on uh, some of my signpost research. I then did some manual development drawing um, where I'm moving into um, markers and colored pencils, trialing some of those colors as they relate to my research. From there, I went into some digital development. I took forward both concepts. I started working with the line concept and the retro idea. I then realized that I could introduce the colors into that. I'm not sure if that's too good or not. Uh, then I started with the other concept, which was the sign idea. And I ended up with this one, which I developed slightly more. This is my preferred concept. Uh, combines my ideas simply and effectively. So you need to annotate your work as you're going through as well. The next part of the task was to consider how I would uh, create a coffee tray 
from folded material. So here I'm doing some visualization drawing of uh, the coffee tray. In this task, you don't need to make clip-in tabs. You can just make uh, glue-on tabs. Here's my uh, fully done formal packaging net. As I said, glue-on tabs. Those of you who work in hospitality have probably seen clip-in tabs, which are a lot more com complicated than that. We can just do glue-on tabs. Here's the um, finished packaging net, which I then... Uh, this is the original manual version that I made on the stiff cartridge paper and I then folded that up and glued it and I think it's gone pretty well. Uh, I've worked out a way that I can have the cups going in there and holding them. From the packaging net I then used components of that to build it in Illustrator. Uh, here I am building each component there accurately and there's the coffee cup that I've made. I simply made half the shape of the coffee cup and revolved it in the 3D effects. <clears throat> there's my um, uh, signpost uh, lookout logo that goes on the coffee cup. And lastly, we finish up with, uh, with a client presentation board for the corporate identity. There's the logo. Uh, in full color, grayscale, and black and white. Here are the colors that I'm specifying. I'm naming them and giving you the hex numbers so that you can ensure that you get the right colors. And here is the completed mock-up of the cafe tray. I used the shapes that I created in Illustrator, put them into Photoshop, and uh, incorporated some shade, and the Illustrator uh, made 3D cup. So that's it, that's the entire task for Unit 3, Outcome 1.